evening. Welcome to the December 14, 2022 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, before we get started, we have the uh, call to order, please. James Hebert. Present. David Bork. Here. Michelle Stevenson. Here. Christine Snow. Here. Rudy Karen. Here. Richard Silkman. Here. And Peter Freilinger. Here. Excellent. Uh, and so the order of the agenda that we're going to have this evening, as you notice, we're not, we don't have any new appeals that we'll be discussing this evening, um, but we will be going through uh, the approval draft after the decision from our November 9th meeting. Uh, we also have our uh, roll call approval of the Menace Growth Management Election of Officers. Uh, before we get started with the Pledge of Allegiance, though, I would like to entertain a motion to switch items six and seven on the agenda. I would like to have the election of officers done first before. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I would like to have the election of officers done first uh, before the growth management ordinance questionnaire so that the new chair will uh, facilitate our discussion of those growth management ordinance questions, uh, zoning board com comments, and adjournment. So do I have a motion for that? Mr. Bork? So moved. And is there a second? A second. And Mr. Karen seconds. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And that is unanimous. Thank you. So first, let's kick this off. Uh, we'll start with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to review the November 9th um, meeting minutes? And does anyone have any questions, comments, or edits that they would like to uh, mention at this time? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Bork? So moved. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. All, the, all those in favor, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of the draft written decision heard at our November 9th meeting. Uh, this is appeal number 2741. This is a practical difficulty variance appeal by Megan and William Bartholomew at 229 Black Point Road. Has everyone had a chance to review the findings of fact and the written decisions that were provided? Are there any questions? And I'm seeing no questions or comments from the board. All those in favor, uh, excuse me, I'll entertain a motion to approve the draft written decision. Mr. Bork? So moved. And a second? I second. And Mr. Karen seconds. All those in favor, please raise your hand. That is unanimous. And next, we will have the election of officers. So at this time, what we what we do here is uh, do we do chair or vice chair first, Brian? Um, you can do chair first. Let's do chair. Nominations for chair. Yeah. So right now, I'd like to open the floor for nominations for uh, chair of the zoning board for the 2023 calendar year, Mr. Bork. Yes, I wish to nominate uh, Peter Freilinger as chair. Mr. Freilinger, do you accept? I do. Excellent. Do we have any other nominations for the chair that we'd like to see at this time? Okay, seeing none. Uh, all those, I guess, uh, we need a motion. All right, uh, I entertain a motion to, um, what's the term, technical term I'm looking for? Um, to elect. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for, <laughs> thank you. This is only stated, but uh, the word I'm looking for is escaping me. But uh, I'll entertain a motion to ha uh, elect uh, Mr. Peter Freilinger as chair of the zoning board for the remainder of this meeting and for the 2023 calendar year. Mr. Bork. So moved. Uh, and is there a second? I second. Mr. Karen seconds. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that is. You can allowed to vote for yourself. Yeah. Certainly, that is you. That is unanimous. Excellent. Um, you want him to do the election for the vice chair? I would actually. Okay. So at this time, Mr. Frelinger, why don't you come up and take the seat of the chair, and I will swap spots with you. Actually, actually, <laughs> yep. So we're from the county committee. It's official. So congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's a pleasure to succeed a wonderful former chair. I'll believe that for tonight. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. I appreciate um, your support and uh, hope that we can uh, uh, at least match the, uh, the fantastic performance um, of, uh, of our 
again, our past chairman. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and we'll have a little, couple words for that at the end of the, the session too. Um, we'll now uh, uh, go about the nom nominating process for vice chair. Are there any nominations for vice chair? Yes. Uh, I'd like to nominate Christine Snow for vice chair. Ms. Snow, do you accept the nomination? I certainly do. Then do we have a motion? To... I certainly do. <laughs> then do we have a motion to elect Ms. Snow as vice chair? So moved. Wow. Yeah. I think I said it first. Is there a second? I second. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, and uh, all in favor, please raise your hand. The motion passes unanimously. Gosh, that's fun. Okay, um, and the next item is the growth management ordinance questionnaire and responses. I think we got a copy of this in our materials. And um, Brian, are you going to be walking us through this, or how would you how would you like to progress with this? I, that's an excellent question. <laughs> have you um, have you gone through it with the long range planning committee? I have. I was about to say yes. I've been through this with the long range planning committee. Well, I think you have the. I think you have the experience with it. You could lead the discussion then. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, uh, with, to give folks some background, um, this is part of the GMO revision process that the town council is embarking on. And uh, um, all of the committees, that I, th I think all of the committees are going through this survey process, um, along with individual um, responses from the, um, uh, from the town council members and the, and the, and the uh, administrative department heads. Um, Autumn led us through it for long-range planning. She did a really good job. But really what this came down to was less a sort of question-by-question question response. What we did was we started on that basis, but we found that it kind of naturally led towards a more open discussion. And I think that was the intent of the survey process as well. So not necessarily that we have to make sure that we've checked the box on each question, but um, have a discussion that can then be summarized in our minutes and um, – added to the overall discussion and survey kind of compilation process. So um, like I said, we'll, we'll start with a couple questions and then we'll just see where the conversation goes, if that makes sense. Um, I think in terms of order here, I would say um, simply raise your hand or, um, or, or say Mr. Chairman or something like that and, we'll, and just start talking. So rather than um, kind of do anything formal of, of that um, Robert's Rules of Order sort of thing, this is more of an open conversation. So. Um, as a summary, the GMO um, is one of the more controversial elements of our um, uh, town planning process at this point. Um, the, the current uh, GMO allows for 144 total permits each year, no more 30 than which of which can be in the rural districts. And it says west of Turnpike here, but it really is the RF and RFM zoning districts um, across town, most of which are west of the Turnpike, but not all of which. And then no more than 20% um, uh, uh, 20 of the total permits can be in a common scheme in a given year, except that no more than 30 could be part of the downs, the crossroad plan districts. There are also exemptions, and this is an important one. There's an allocation process. There are exemptions that are in, written into the GMO itself, and then an exemption process, which can allow exemptions beyond what is exempted within the, with, within the, the, the ordinance. Um, so all repair and replacement units and gift locks are exempted. Um, those often become come before us, so that's natural. Um, all affordable housing units, and importantly, these, these are affordable housing units as designated by um, our, our state ordinance for affordable housing. So it's, there's a distinction between affordable housing and sometimes workforce housing, which is this is only for the affordable housing, which is um, for uh, housing costs no more than um, uh, for for um, uh, uh, people, households earning no more than 80% of uh, the median wage in, in Cumberland County. Um, all manufactured uh, housing units in a licensed community that's covered in, di in a different um, part of the zoning code. Up to 100 one-bedroom one multifamily units, and this exists as part of the ordinance until the end of 2024, so for another two years. Up to 10 workforce housing permits per year, and th this is, again, is different than the affordable housing units. And then up to 289 mixed reuse or multifamily units in the crossroads plan development. Um, so, uh, with that, the survey asks us a number of questions. Um, we'll start with that first one Does the number of new residential units constructed each year directly affect your board or committee? If yes, how? <clears throat> Chair? Yes. <clears throat> Maybe I'm missing something here, but 
we're a, we're a board of appeals. Whatever the ordinance is, we either get appeals or not based upon what people want to do with the ordinance. So it doesn't seem like many of these questions are relevant for us. That's kind of what I thought too, Richard. I, I, it was kind of one of those, um, because of the nature of our board, we, we, we don't really intersect at all with this kind of an ordinance. Um, but I, I think they wanted to hear what we thought, wh whether that makes sense. And, and one of the questions that came up too was, um, is the zone, and this came up in the long range planning committee meeting, not sort of in general, but is the, would the zoning board have a role potentially in the exemption process or the exception process? So um, again, as we go through the other questions that might come out, but I think you're right for that first question, the answer is really no. It's, it's a fairly simple one. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I agree with Mr. Silkman. I mean, in a way, you know, we, we uh, new residential units construct, constructed each year should be constructed um, appropriately meeting all ordinances and codes that are available. So they wouldn't be constructed in a manner that would put them in violation requiring them to come before us. Are these questions, this is my second question, are these um, being sent out to all boards? Yes. Okay. So not not specifically directed towards us, but Correct. as a board, they're just asking us to to chime in as yeah, well. This, the, and department heads. The, 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 the shellfish committee, for example, is also getting this one. Gotcha. So, yeah. Uh, Understood. Mr. Chair? Yeah. I, I only see two things that are applicable. Uh, really, first, I, I just like to make a comment that the underlying point here is that everything has been halted for six months. That's right. If I That's understand this correctly. That's correct, yeah. So that means that all the exemptions here uh, is, is the, these in particular uh, are halted uh, for six months. So none of this can go on. Is that correct? That's, I don't know. And Brian, don't, did, did, no, we're still issuing growth permits. Yes, there are certain types, yeah. but you know, I'm talking about the exemption stuff. The exemptions? Yeah, like yeah, the I'm not, I'm re not repair and replacement units. That one will directly affect us. You know, if there's a, a potential... Uh, Zoning yeah. issue that comes before to be it. Honest, to be honest, though, I don't believe that we ever require a growth permit for replacement anyway. Mm -hmm. It's only for new, new units. So I'm not really well, sure we have why that's we do have a lot of them who wish to. Uh, uh, a lot of applicants come before us who wish to uh, basically tear down and replace, or to expand. Right. You know, and 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 really, you know, that might fall into into the first one: repair and replacement units. Uh, and gift laws. Uh, and the second one that comes to mind is shoreland zoning. Uh, we've got the, a clock running on shoreland zoning, you know, where people want to get new construction in, and that's a tough one to, to approve, of course, because, you know, there, it's undue hardship. And uh, once, you know, once the new standards come into place, then that means that it's going to be much, much more difficult for people to get any kind of uh, permitting approved. Yeah, I think you might be intermingling shoreland zoning with floodplain. Yes, floodplain. With the new flood Thank maps. You. So those two are really two separate animals. Okay. But some, some, sometimes related because yeah. the properties may be both. So in that sense, <clears throat> uh, it, it does impact us. I mean, there's, there, there are some potential uh, you know, cases that would have come before us in the next six months that won't be coming before us anymore in those categories. One thing that, that um, and I, the, the question I, I think we might want to raise is the exemptions. I think something like that where a new home is being constructed on an existing lot would be able to use the existing allocation, and those are still available. So, you, so the 144 total permits are still available on each year. It's the exemptions and the exemption process that's been halted by the six-month review. Um, is, as I understood it from from how, uh, how, how Autumn described it at the long range. I was only referring to the things that directly impact our yeah, yeah, board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, obviously there are a whole bunch of uh, allocations in here which are halted mm -hmm. for the six months. Uh, but you know the only ones that I see that have any impact at all are the ones I mentioned. Yeah. The, the floodplain. Is that right? Correct. Correct, Brian. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, you know the first one, which is repair and replacement. Gotcha. You know, okay. if, if there's zoning issues you know, connect, connected to either, either one. And, and I think where we would see it as a direct impact, you're saying, David, is that we now simply would not see those coming before the committee. Yes, and it also affects those people being able to come before us. Right. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a, uh, 
that has an adverse uh, impact on the people in this community. Yep. Okay. Okay. We should, we'll, we'll note that uh, as part of the response. Any other comments on that first one or thoughts? Okay, then uh, we'll move on. Does the effect of residential units constructed vary based on the type of housing? Yes, and why? And again, this is related to us as a zoning board of appeals. Um, to me, this struck me as being a, um, there, it's almost a, this is not an impact on the zoning board. No. Mr. Chairman, I would yes. almost just classify it as not applicable. Yeah, not applicable. I think that's right. Yeah. Yep. That's what the shellfish committee is going to have all down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what aspects of the current GMO annual allocation do you believe work well or not, and why? Um, and this will be an interesting one. The Long Range Planning Committee had a substantial thought process on this one, but it relates to our stewardship of the comprehensive plan. Um, I'm not sure the zoning board has an opinion on this. And, and as a, as a quasi judicial body, it might not be appropriate for us to have an opinion on this. Any thoughts? <clears throat> this member has no opinion. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a strong opinion, but I don't think it's appropriate. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, if you don't have a strong opinion on the G GMO, you're, you're amazing that you're standing in, exactly. in, in Scarborough. So yes. Um, so, okay. What aspects of the current exemption GMO exemptions do you believe work well or well not? And why? And again, I think this is, I'm not sure it's appropriate for the zoning board to express an opinion on this one. Well, I think the uh, point that I made earlier really falls into this category. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, okay. you, it's not, it wasn't really in category one. Right. You know. Gotcha. Okay. Actually, that's, We'll make that we'll make that note suit as well, David. Thank you. Now, do you think an exemption process is beneficial to the town? Why or why not? This is different than the exemptions that are laid out in the, in the ordinance. This is the process by which somebody can go to council and get a, a, a general ex exemption, or not a general, but a specific exemption that's not listed. Again, should we have an opinion as of the ZBA? I don't think so. Um, I wouldn't think so. I mean, we, yeah. we, you know, the zoning board operates in a very small box compared yeah. to planning, long-term planning in town council. You know, we, we operate on just the, the appeals that, that come before us, the information in the packets, you know, we're not doing outside research. We're not engaging before meetings with uh, uh, any folks from the town or anything like that. So I have a hard time thinking of a reason for us to respond to something other than not really applicable. Yep. I think I agree with that. I think that really um, fits for the other items as well. <laughs> um, yeah, th that last one I think is another statement where we can say our role as a ZBA is a relatively narrow one. As a quasi-judicial body, it relates exclusively to um, examining whether applicants um, meet the specific, the specific elements of our zoning ordinance for the available appeals or special use permits under the, the ordinance, full stop. And um, we look to the town council and the town to establish the rules of the, of the, the zoning ordinance that will govern our, our process. I would offer, Mr. Chair, if I may, the only, the only thing that comes to mind on this, and I haven't given it a great deal of thought on number eight, um, would be, and I think it was mentioned earlier, if somehow the decision-making process fell on this board, or uh, let me let me back up, an appeal to the decision-making process could fall toward to this board. Mm -hmm. For example, if I was the one to deny a growth permit and, and somebody wanted to file an administrative appeal, mm -hmm. then yeah. the board would be hearing that appeal. Gotcha. The other thing, and I'm not sure if this is the case, if somebody was denied by council, let's say, on one of the exemptions, could they appeal that to the Board of Appeals? And I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, no, no, no. But those are those are two situations where it could, I don't know if you'd call it directly or indirectly impact, or or uh, the principles of this committee or board in its decision-making would be in effect, if you would. Um, All right, that was a question I had. If, if you were if you were to deny a growth management permit or growth permit under, say, one of the exemptions here, um, at the end of the six month window ends and your people are coming to you and saying, um, no, hey, I want to put up the 11th workforce housing unit this year or 
I want, or I want to put on uh, the tenth workforce housing, and you say no. Do you have a basis which they can appeal on, or is it just? Do you have discretion to deny an exam ex exemption? Or it's a great question. My 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 first blush would be that in in section five of the zoning ordinance. An administrative appeal can be brought by any decision or ruling made by the building inspector or code okay. enforcement officer. So I would say, I would guess that if my if my decision was sort of the final decision mm -hmm. and it didn't get bumped to council, for example, to, to to decide whether they fit, you know, because some of this is under count the exemption process is really granted by council, I think, for the most part. It's yeah, the exemption gone. process is is council right that is true so i don't i don't know that it would come to i i think in that case i wouldn't be the one making that decision anyway they'd first right. have to get that exemption from council Got in it. those cases um and and frankly with the modifications that were made to the growth management ordinance a couple of years ago um i don't really think that there's going to be much chance for somebody to appeal for example it used to be you could you could uh, apply for a growth permit long before you ever had a building permit application. Mm -hmm. Now you have to apply at the same time. So you, your project is shovel ready. You're not, right. you're not banking that growth permit mm -hmm. for later. That was a, a problem because somebody, those were only good for, I think it was six months. And at the end of six months, if they hadn't yet built that house, mm -hmm. their permit expired. And we were forever getting complaints from developers and builders because their situation had changed and gee, they missed it by a week. And, mm -hmm. you know, so those were kind of, but I don't, I don't see a lot of opportunity quite frankly right now for me to be in that position or our department necessarily to be in that uh, position because a lot of the changes now fall to council or could fall to the town manager when it's housing affordability, because he's the one that determines that. Okay. So I don't think it would come to the board, but I just bring that up that if in some way they change the ordinance or set it up mm -hmm. in a way that it does fall on uh, my department or me to make that determination and somebody wants to appeal that determination, if it doesn't go their way, then it could come to the board. Okay. But again, it's a long shot, I would say. Yes. Mr. Chair, I have a question for Brian. Sure. Um, to what, is the planning board uh, subject to... Um, uh, appeal to our board. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Well, for example, if the planning board makes a decision and uh, the applicant uh, is denied, uh, do they can they come before us for, uh, to appeal the decision made by the planning board? Because uh, in some municipalities that is the case. Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that's in our code. I think they it. could. I don't know that it's ever happened. Yeah, but I, I think technically they could. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I go back to the point of, you know, we're, we're putting in a six months, you know, delay, mm -hmm. you know, no exemptions. And, and, and we may have some that come up. And I don't know if decisions made by planning board are yeah, relevant. I, I, yeah. Honestly, Dave, I'm not really sure. I'm yeah, not okay. sure if that's right. possible. I'd have to go back to the ordinance and yeah. see what authority. Sometimes those it's only it's only decisions of the code officer and other decisions would have to be taken to to superior court. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. okay. I, I'm going to propose that we um, we'll fill out the this um, uh, sort of a survey as as written with the um, uh, with the. Um, responses that we got, most of which are going to be not not applicable or inappropriate for the zoning board to opine or something something along those those lines. But de de they will definitely include some of the uh, comments you've made around the um, the the re um, re replacement units in particular, um, and uh, some of the other other things. I think we'll also include a um, a request for clarification of what a GMO appeals process would look like, so that we can understand what a role would be, if any. Um, and so we can understand what our responsibilities would be going forward. Good point. And then um, we'll include comments on this discussion in the minutes, um, but I don't think we need to formally approve a, a a response. So do we need to bring this back to the uh, to the uh, board and? Well, 
Uh, yeah, I was asked actually a question for you. What did you do with the Long Range Planning Committee? Uh, well, Long Range Planning Committee, we are incorporating our response in the minutes, and that's it. That's it. You didn't actually put responses on to this. No, and, and part of the reason was Autumn was in the room with us, and she was taking notes and saying, got it, I'll fill out the form for you. And So I want to ask, um, Doreen, do you feel, hearing this in, in the recorded meeting, do we have enough to in the minutes to be able to formulate responses to each of these, or do, is there anything that you feel we probably might want to clarify or get clarification? Okay. So, cause I want to remind the board that they're asking for this to be returned to them by December 23rd. Exactly. So we're not yeah. going to meet again before Correct. we, we yeah. have to do this. So I will, we'll, we'll gladly put that note in there that we'd like clarification on the right. appeal process, but it's not going to, it's not going to affect the response gotcha. because they're looking for your responses. So I guess I'd like to just for clarification one last time, were there any of these numbered items on this, on this questionnaire that you felt were, were applicable or that there was a response needed because the rest of them were pretty much not applicable or number four only number four. Okay. And that's specifically with regard to exemptions for um, that, that may impact um, appeals that would be brought before us. Okay. So that was where the clarification on the appeals process comes in. That's okay. right. And then there was some, which one was it the day that there, somebody had the comment about the replacement units? And well, that was, plane? that's what I meant for number four. Yeah. Okay. The, the way it's written, it's, it has a negative impact, a potential negative impact on the board and the members of the public who might be appealing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may, um, I feel like number seven is pretty big and we should probably write a response on it. What does your committee board or department identify as the public benefit? Yeah, and, and this one, just to clarify that one, and, and, and we'll do it, but. Um, the current growth management ordinance requires um, the exemption process that council looks at to identify a public benefit specifically that would enable them to approve the exemption. So it, they, they don't apply to the exemptions on affordable housing units and things like that, for example. It, would, it applies for when you come with a bespoke um, uh, uh, exemption through the town council process. So just to clarify, if that helps. Um, but to Shelley's point, I think yeah. it's, it's a valid thing that we probably ought to yeah. get an opinion from the board on what you feel are possible public benefit. I just feel like that's the one that we can actually write a response on. I don't know that I have a great response right now for it. Gotcha. <laughs> but yeah. um, I, that's the one that I think I almost every committee can fill out. That's fair. Yeah, putting my, my I'm the long range planning committee had an easy response for this one, which was basically it, it aligns a public benefit is a project that aligns with the stated objectives of the town comprehensive plan. And since the LRPC kind of owns the plan as it were, um, that was an easy one for us for the zoning board. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I would think it has to fit in with what our mission is, which is very narrow. I don't know how we define anything. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a public benefit of what? The growth management what? ordinance? Uh, I don't think it necessarily pertains to, to the board's mission. I think they're looking, for, you know, they're just looking for this committee or this board's opinion on what public benefit is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it is vague in the current ordinance, which is just that the town council must identify a public benefit. Yeah. Lowercase p, lowercase b. So it's not like even a defined term um, when um, when uh, considering an exemption through the exemption process. Why would our board have an opinion on that? I, I can understand why each of us individually may, but I don't understand why the board would have an opinion on that. That's what I'm struggling with too, Richard. Because I'll, 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 I... I feel like we need to be um, as objective and sort of neutral as possible. 
you know, because we, we treat every application and appeal and any administrative appeal or anything that comes through on the basis of merits of what that application is and not, <clears throat> and, you know, we don't, we're not coming in with a, you know, a certain uh, agenda to, to, you know, have more of X and less of Y, so to speak. Yeah, that's what I, I, I'm, as a zoning board, I could under, I mean, I understand why the, the um, actually, this is a good one to go to the shellfish committee. Shellfish committee may have a view that a public benefit is um, not damaging the shellfish fisheries. Um, and that could be their statement of where, of, of the public benefits that they would want to see. Again, though, for the zoning board, I, I would say one thing. Uh, maybe we could say with regard to the growth management ordinance, a, a public benefit um, that we can see with that, that we want to make sure is, is upheld to avoid you know, applications that are coming before us, is making sure that the town authorized permits to properties and, and new construction that meet the current codes and ordinances of the town. That way they theoretically would never have to come before us for anything. In other words, not propagating nonconformity. Yeah, not propagating, not promulgating. However you want to, however you want to phrase it, but uh, you know, reducing, reducing nonconformity, reducing which non is our mission. That is our mission. Yeah, actually, and, and that's, I think that's probably the public benefit we would look for, so that we are not facing um, additional applications where we have to make a judgment about conformance. And maybe I mean, if you wanted to, you know, with regard to reducing nonconformity. You had the Higgins Beach zoning ordinance uh, revisions that that took place because we kept seeing application after application <coughs> from those <coughs> folks, and that is a public benefit now because it's less time and effort and energy spent by the town, the applicants, and residents uh, yeah. to going through this whole process. So I mean, the ultimately reducing nonconformity, I think, is a great answer in this uh, in this uh, aspect. I agree. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. So, Jerry, do you think you've got enough then to, I think there's enough there to pull together a response and we can submit that, get our homework assignment done in time, and then we'll add this to the minutes um, for next next month and uh, and, uh, and uh, formally endorse that. But uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate, the, I'm sure the town appreciates the discussion, and uh, we can move forward. Unless there's more comments, we can move forward. Terrific. Um, we're now on to item eight of the, the agenda, zoning board comments. I have a question. Yeah, Shelly. Um, when are or who makes a decision of if um, Mr. Silkman and I will become? Oh well, well timely as if ripped from the day's headlines. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Moments ago. I would. Yeah. So so I have some comments. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Please take us through. Uh, uh, I, I did receive uh, from the appointments committee, actually through uh, Tody Justice, a town clerk, um, the appoints, appointments committee uh, made their decision on December 6th to move Michelle Stevenson from first alternate to full voting member with a term to expire in 2023 and to reappoint Richard Silkman, but move him from second alternate to first alternate with a term to expire in 2025 and to appoint Kyle Noonan as second alternate with a term to expire in 2025. So we have a, a new alternate member, Kyle Noonan, um, who was appointed. Um, Mr. Karen apparently did not get his letter into the town clerk in time, so we don't have a replacement yet for him. But, <laughs> but he, did, he did do so, and I was told tonight uh, just prior to the meeting by um, our town manager that the appointments committee met tonight and they have appointed Joseph Doherty to the board. I'm not sure whether they appointed him as a full voting member or as you know, I'm sure. not sure where the, where the alternates are still fairly new. Um, I'm not sure that they moved any more alternates into full, full voting members. So I, I'm going to assume that Mr. Doher Doherty is going to be a full voting member. Okay. But I'm not sure of that. We'll look for clarity for that from the town yep. for the January yep. meeting. Um, so, we'll, yeah, we'll, I think everybody will be sworn in and hopefully here. And, and uh, uh, Mr. Silkman, I don't know. I, I know you're going to be out of, out of town for a while. Is that <clears> going to start <throat> with the January Yeah, meeting? I won't make January, February, or March. Okay. So, so and, and my suggestion 
uh, to Mr. Sultan was because he's going to miss a few meetings through the winter anyway. And I, I assume this is sort of an annual thing that you go away for a few months in the winter. It hasn't been yet. Oh, it, it hasn't. Become. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fair. And, and so my suggestion was for him to stay as an alternate member for now, but should the board uh, make up change in the future and depending on your personal situation and how you feel about it, then we could revisit that at a later date, if that sounds fair. But I, I, I love to have you stay with the board and, and uh, value your, your input. I mean, I would say there have been, as you've seen throughout the year, there are plenty of opportunities for alternates to be voting members where we've had down as low as four people in a meeting at one time. So um, yes, there will, be, there will be certainly opportunities there. Yeah. It is helpful to know that the, uh, we will have a full, full slate for the 2023 year. Yeah, yeah, it should be it should be fine. So okay. does does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing I would point out to the board that I think you have in your packets is Doreen's uh, provided us with a um, um, sort of a, a data sheet on uh, our report, if you will, on the activity that the boards had over the yeah. the period from January one to December thirty first. Yeah. Oh, you didn't include it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, we have that available. Should anyone want it, we can forward it to you. That'd be great. I'm sorry. I sort of assumed it was in the back. Actually, what you only give me stuff after you give it to the board. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can get that to you. So that'd be great. Terrific. It's good. Good information. The only other thing I would like to now do, and I'm going to I'm going to have you do this uh, for me. We'd like to um, present our past chair, James Hebert with a, uh, a token of our appreciation for his, um, how many years? Uh, seven years and seven months. And how many of those were as chair? Two. Okay. And then two as vice chair. Okay. And, uh, so that's how many minutes and days? A lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm going to pass this right on over to yeah. you. Oh, that's very lovely. Yeah. And I would like to um, entertain a motion to thank Mr. He Hebert for his years of service and congratulate him on uh, having one Wednesday night a month freed up. So moved. Seconded. Thank you, Anchorage. And uh, uh, can I see a show of hands? Thank you very much, James. Thank you very much. <laughs> and if there are no further comments, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, yes, I think we're. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got all the things that I had on my list. Yes, I think we're good. So yeah. moved. And a second. All those in favor? Oh man. Uh, the motion is approved. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Have a good day. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, exactly.